Okay, we're now recording, Joni. Rock up. Okay, Joni, welcome to the Influence Ecology Podcast again. I think this is our third time together, uh, twice before with your husband. So thank yes. you for that. Yeah. For our guests, please say your name, where you live, and a little bit about what you do. My name is Joni Rocco. I am thrilled to be here. Thanks for the opportunity again, John, to be a part of this. Um, I am from a little town just outside of Denver, Colorado, and my husband, Joe, and I own a wood floor contracting business. However, that's not how we say it now that we've been educated by Influence Ecology. So we would say that we offer Colorado's only nationally certified award-winning wood floor advanced master craftsman. Mm. Fantastic. And then you also serve on the faculty for Influence Ecology, um, both with the Fundamentals of Transaction Program and also the Mechanics and Practice Program. So definitely worth noting that. One of the things I'll say for those that are listening, uh, and we'll meet Joni at the conference if you don't know her already, is that Joni's one of the people that, in my view, most exemplifies um, bringing our approaches and our programs directly to her business. Um, and there's so many results you can hear on other podcasts that come from that. So, Joni, it's always a pleasure to have you. Thanks. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. And the opportunity to participate as faculty has been a really tremendous learning experience for me because one of the ways we talked about in the last podcast that Joe and I did is you truly do learn by teaching. And that has just been such a phenomenal experience for me. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So at the mid-year virtual conference uh, on the virtual campus, which none of us can, I'm so excited for it. I can't wait. Um, one of the things we're doing is we're going to be talking about building an influence ecology. And as I've described it, I've told people something like, imagine building a house and you look up and you go, oops, forgot the plumbing. And so sometimes people build transactions and they don't know that they forgot the plumbing. They, they don't even know that there's something that they forgot, didn't see, couldn't see, um, left out completely. And so the transaction fails. So you're going to be introducing the group of people known by personality and transactional competence as we teach it, excuse me, personality and transactional behaviors, we teach it as the performer. So um, each uh, of the series of talks is going to be introduced by someone as Joni's going to be doing a context talk. So if you would tell us what that talk is called and say a little bit about what you plan to share about the performers. Well, the talk is called The Best Story Wins, and I am honored to be able to be a part of that talk. Um, it is very exciting to me because there is this huge piece of, just like you mentioned, the plumbing. When you construct something, the transaction, and you leave out a personality, uh, there is certainly a hole missing. And I can personally attest to this right now, not just because of the work that we always do mm. um, on a regular basis with our uh, remodeling wood floor contracting <laughs> business, but also we're gutting our master bathroom right now. And we ran into a couple of surprises along the way. <laughs> and so when you leave out those personalities, it there are these huge gaps. So I'm excited to talk about it in terms of including the the story because we live in story as human beings, we're linguistic animals. And the other piece of that is what I'm excited about at conference, which I know we'll talk about in a little bit. And that is setting up mm. an environment to so, allow, um, once you the have the performer gonna, personality, you know, to really allow that performer for personality to, to thrive. If they are performers, learn something. But if they're not performers, they might learn how to work with performers or how to bring performers into transactions. So anything you want to say about working with performers or bringing performers into transactions and the benefit of doing so? Absolutely. So 
just like I mentioned a second ago, we live in story. And so a performer can truly help craft a narrative where whether it's like a three word little bit that you need to just get that point across concisely to your customer, your employee, your vendor, whoever that is in the transaction with you. But also it can be a much more lengthy um, brand foundation, a way to really hammer home who you are um, to all kinds of people outside of your company or your transaction that you're trying to build. Uh, but really, truly, for performers and also for those who maybe aren't aren't as familiar with a performer personality or haven't experienced the true power of a performer, learning how to set that environment up so that a performer can thrive. That's, I think, where the yeah, real please. power from the talk will come. Um, and I can talk just a tiny bit about that and how we've set that up in our transaction, if you'd like. Okay, so one of the things that Joe was hesitant about wasn't that I couldn't do the job of marketing and selling for our business with four kids, but it was that he was very protective of me as a parent and making sure that I could manage my time appropriately. Um, but what we decided to do is, is just allow me to really move with a lot of freedom within certain constraints of time. So I would put on my voicemail greeting that I only took calls certain times of the day. Um, when I do schedule an estimate to go out to somebody's home and measure and talk them through the process, I list two or three very specific times when I can come out to the project. And that gives me the freedom to allow me to be mom when I need to be, to allow me to be business owner when I need to be, and to allow me to truly sell for the business. It gives me these small blocks of space where I know I have to do this thing, but then I also free up for that higher level thinking to manage the business, to manage our family, um, and do all of that successfully. And the second part that I would say is that um, in this talk, we'll talk about how to set the transaction so that the performer doesn't have to say no, building all of the terms in place so that you're very careful about the performer just being able to say, yes, here's what we offer. Yay. And give that to the person on the other side of the transaction so that there's really this chance for the performer to thrive and and enjoy their job and not have to say, That's oh, right. no, we don't do that. Now, no, the people that are this, listening, no. because it's really hard um, for us to say no. So in those two ways, that we really set that performer up for success. Uh, might be naive to about performers. I think that a lot of times <laughs> the other personalities don't get the oh value my gosh, what a laughter of the clown car. That one is. That we continue on. I'm so sorry. No, it's beautiful <laughs> because you know I go on, please. <laughs> you did <laughs> really seriously. <laughs> I never get the value. Well, occasionally I get the value. See, of the clown I surprised car. you. See, you know the you rest of us just want to get to work. Come on, this is serious stuff. But, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. It's so good to be able to remember how to have fun and be human. And I think sometimes we forget that, yes, we do have to go to work, but there are people doing this work and sometimes giving them the chance to laugh about something or being able to change the mood from something that's super rigorous to a little silly and goofy every once in a while. It, it does something for the rest of us. And there's something that has to be said for satisfaction in terms of smiling and just letting go. <laughs> I'm not scared. Although I will say this, I'm a little bit intimidated by my virtual avatar and how she's going to walk around and things like that. But then I thought about it in terms of this talk and I'm not afraid to be goofy or silly or expose um, what it is to truly be a human. I mean, mom life, right? So I think some of that has Speaking brought a of lot of avatars, joy, um, um, not just to our business, but also to our personal conference. life. There's a lot to be said for being a little bit fun and silly and goofy. <laughs> oh, you mean your avatar is cool hairstyle. I see. <laughs> well, I'm still <laughs> waiting on a cool hairstyle. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, re- I'm still waiting for the pink mohawk, but I'll, I'll do what I have to do, you know. Um, I'm most excited though, and I think this has to do mm. with part of the talk. There's an opportunity to learn from an environment that we're unfamiliar with. If we can step outside of ourselves just a bit, because normally we're in a place where we know how to move around and we know the norms and we know what to do. We are comfortable. We have that knowing as we describe it as a condition of life. We understand how to navigate our environment. But one of the things that I've learned over the years in my journey with influence ecology is there's a difference between knowing and fitness. There's a difference between navigating an environment and producing an environment that satisfies your aims. So this will be, I think, an an opportunity. I keep using the word opportunity, but I really do think it is that to step back outside of ourselves, to address that biological agitation of not being able to move your arms, (laughs) maybe in a way that you want to or something like that, but to be able to experience um, a little bit of of baby steps as we educate ourselves in this virtual environment. And if we ha- take that opportunity and we can really use it to look at how that applies in our day-to-day lives, how can we produce an environment right. and Johnny, be very fit in the environment? The and that is something in my education with influence ecology that I've truly learned how to do. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, John.